Bloomberg reported that the US and the UK want to triple nuclear power by 2050. I want to investigate what is happening in Europe currently and how this aligns with the ambitions of the UK and the US. Now, when we look at the worldwide nuclear capacity that is installed today, uh, we see that there's 370 gigawatts of it. And if we want to triple that, we would get up to 1.1 terawatts of nuclear capacity by 2050. That capacity would be good for producing roughly 9,000 terawatt hours per year. So the best news came from Sweden this week. And let me quote uh, Simon Wachter, who tweeted about this. He says, Swedish government coalition announces a goal of two large scale nuclear reactors by 2035 and the need for new nuclear equal to 10 large scale reactors by 2045. They also present initiatives for a government nuclear coordinator, credit guarantees and other risk sharing measures. So other notable countries that want to expand their nuclear capacity capacity are France, Poland, Ukraine, and the United Kingdom, and also Sweden. So these countries are basically leading the pack currently in ambitions. So let's consider which reactor vendors are trying to sell nuclear reactors in Europe. So the first reactor vendor that is trying to sell new reactors in Europe is EDF. EDF has three reactor types on offer currently, uh, the EPR, the EPR2, and the EPR1200. They are also working on a small modular reactor, which is called the Newart reactor which is supposed to be 350 megawatts. Now the EPR is 1650, 1670 megawatts. The EPR2 as well and the EPR1200, as the name suggests, is a 1200 megawatt reactor. Now the EPR has a double containment, four loops. Uh, it's a pressurized water reactor and the EPR is basically a simplified version of the EPR with a single containment building, uh, still four loops, but a whole lot less uh, different kinds of piping, different kinds of pumps, less doors, less valves, etc. So basically they have taken the lessons of the EPR. They've looked at the design and, and basically said what can we do to build this thing faster and cheaper the next time we will build it so that's the epr2 which they are also offering to other countries and they want to build 14 of these themselves and then there's the epr 1200 which is basically a downsized epr2 with three loops instead of four so next uh, we get westinghouse now westinghouse has contracts with ukraine uh, Poland and Bulgaria, and they want to sell about a dozen new AP1000s over here. Finally, we get to Capco. Uh, Capco is the APR1400 on offer, which they have successfully built in the United Arab Emirates. But currently, there's some legal issues with Westinghouse. Uh, so they did offer the APR1400 to Poland, and I believe that there is some memorandum of understanding that they want to build these. But at this moment, it is unsure whether they can actually build these reactors. So there's also two SMRs that we can talk about. So there's the BWRX300 and the Rolls-Royce UK SMR. Uh, the BWRX300 is a 300 megawatt boiling water reactor and the Rolls-Royce reactor has 470 megawatts and is a pressurized water reactor. When we look at the X300 and its potential, there's some staggering numbers going around, uh, especially in Poland, hearing figures as, as high as 97 units, but also so there's serious interest in Sweden from Karen Full Next. The Netherlands, uh, we have a startup that is working specifically with the X300. And there are many other countries uh, that also are interested in the X300 right now. So let's do a deep dive in the power reactor information system PRIS from the IAEA. So currently there's about 370 gigawatts installed in the world and 118 gigawatts of this nuclear capacity is installed in Europe, almost one third. So four countries are building new nuclear reactors as we speak in Europe today, uh, which are the United Kingdom, France, Slovakia, and Ukraine. The trouble is that we lost a lot more capacity than that because we lost 56 gigawatts gigawatts of nuclear capacity. Germany being the worst case, 26 gigawatts gone. France closed their Fessenheim nuclear power reactor as basically an offering 
to the Germans. Sadly, the UK is the country that lost the second biggest volume of nuclear generating capacity. Luckily, I think that we can bounce back. So when we consider all the signed deals, the memorandums of understanding and the exploratory stuff, the discussions, then we see that we can add another 115 gigawatt to the 118 gigawatt that is existing today. And when we consider this graph, we see that France still tops uh, the nuclear power game. Poland is coming in second when they get to realize all their react. I have to add a caveat here because we can add 115 gigawatts. Yes. And if we consider this, this graph, we see that France, Poland, Ukraine, and the United Kingdom and Sweden will lead the pack. And it's very important to note that we need to convert plants into actual construction projects because that's what really matters in the end. Now, when we consider the figures from a megawatts installed per million inhabitants perspective, then we see that Sweden leads the pack, being followed by Finland, France and Poland. Now, these countries really are showing the rest of the world that you can power a substantial part of your economy using nuclear power. So now we need to ask the question, is it enough? Are we doing good enough? Uh, so considering Europe and all the plans that are being presented here, we could potentially double our capacity by 2050. Now, unfortunately, this is not even coming close to what the UK and the US tell that their ambition is, which is tripling the capacity. Now, when we consider, for instance, very conservative figures on what we expect that we need by 2050 in the world, people say, okay, we would need 45,000 terawatt hours per year of production then adding this amount of nuclear capacity, so the 1.1 terawatt, not just the European stuff, but the worldwide reactor ambitions, then we would get 20% of all our electricity out of nuclear, which I think is a low figure. It should be more. So when I consider this from my own skeptical perspective, then I would say, okay, it's a good ambition what we are showing as Europe, but it's not good enough and we need more. So, and I'm also very unsure whether we would actually add 180 gigawatts of nuclear capacity in Europe. The problem is politics mainly because you get mood swings of the people every four or five years, maybe, maybe once in a decade. And sometimes these mood swings can be quite severe. Uh, so suppose that there will be a whole new left sweep coming through Europe in 10 years from now. And these people say, listen, we absolutely hate nuclear and we think that renewables can do it all. Uh, so we are going to stop all the projects and we are going to make sure that no nuclear gets built ever again. That's a real risk that we still face today. I'm happy that we're ambitious and that we're showing ambition, but it's no guarantee that it's actually going to happen. So what must happen in order to get way beyond 45,000 terawatt hours per year? Um, first of all, I think that the United States really must become far more serious about their own energy policies, because currently they are building one reactor, one. It's, it's, it's Vogel 4 and AP1000. They do have some, some plans for small modular reactors. They do have construction licenses for AP1000s. None of them are being built currently. There's no final investment decision anywhere. So currently the United States is basically trailing behind all these other countries. What are other things that will happen that I think are going to help getting enough power from nuclear? I think that Germany is going to reconsider their position within now and the next 10 years. Italy is currently showing that they want to rejoin the nuclear world and many other countries are probably going to include nuclear in their future plans as well and this is really necessary now thank you all for watching and have a nice day